Hey guys, uh, I'm back with another video on SAP Central Finance. Uh, we'll talk about the overall mapping functionality in Central Finance in this video. Before I jump ahead, uh, just uh, in case you want to have a look at other videos, uh, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, which is Nitin Gupta SAP, where you'll get a lot of SAP videos and you can sub click the bell icon and you can get updates on all the videos coming in the in the in the next few days okay so before we jump on to mapping let's talk about uh, let's just uh, recap of central finance central finance is basically a replication of data from accounting data mostly from the source system to sap s4 hana system via slt and uh, it's it can be non sap system as a source or the sap system as a source and it's a no disruption approach towards S4 HANA migration, or you can say finance transformation uh, for any organization. And uh, you can have any number of source systems connected through SLT, and the mapping plays a key role because uh, any all your different systems will have different master data today in the in the systems. You have different uh, number limits, like GL accounts can be five five characters, plant can be. Uh, or customer can be six characters, or uh, depending on you know what you have in the source system today. But you want to harmonize your master data things in your S4 HANA approach. So any transaction being passed on the objects in source system get transformed and posted into S4 HANA. However, there is a mapping in between where you the data get transformed and harmonized into a standard format and get posted in S4 HANA. So we'll talk about that. So what is mapping? With business mapping in central finance, you can define a relationship between an identifier or a code used in S source system and the one used in central finance system. As I gave an example, you have a GL account in ECC, you have a GL account in S4 HANA. This is important because for the same mapping entity like GL account or cost center, different identifiers or code may be used in different systems. Like GL account have an ID 649001, for example, travel expenses in ECC while your travel expense account is 343069 in S4. So how do you match the, how do you ensure that the document posted on 649001 in ECC, any travel expense is being replicated to 343069. So that's a way where we map these two GL account together and then when the document get transformed and reposted into S4, it actually get reposted into 343069. However, you have a visibility of what was my source GL. So this is a mapping screen, uh, the configuration menu, CFIN IMG is the transaction, the shortcut to move into SPRO, then you get into the tab for mapping. And then you see we have settings for mapping, just a documentation, technical settings for business systems, you map the, map the systems, mapping actions, we'll talk about those, key mapping, value mapping, and cost object mapping. So in this session we'll talk about these four aspects, uh, mapping action, starting from mapping actions. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Mapping action. So we have four mapping actions. Uh, keep data, mapping obligatory, clear data, and map if possible. So what each works or how it functions and as they have their own responsibility in their own way. So keep data is any data coming from ECC to S4, I'm saying ECC, when, when I say ECC, it means any source system. So just for simplification, I'm saying ECC. So keep data means document coming from ECC, get reposted into S4 HANA system, and when the mapping action on the GL account is, let's say, keep data, it will not do anything, it will not read the mapping tables, it will simply have your GL account in ECC, it should be there in S4, so that, you know, the same number should be present, it will not, it will just keep what is coming, from source and will put as it is in the target. The document number will change, but the objects will remain the same. Any object used in the document having keep data as the mapping action. Obligatory, uh, where all the field must be mapped. For example, now you take an example, document coming from ECC to S4, company code. You have company code 6005 in ECC, you have 1001 in S4. So these two have to be mapped and the company code mapping action should be mapping obligatory. Clear data, any doc, any object you don't want, you know, you are changing your org, org structure, you are changing your way of reporting, way of working in, S, in S4. So any data coming from ECC, you want to get cleared out, not of course the mandatory objects like company code, you cannot clear it out, but uh, any 
object which you don't want to intend to use in S4, you can clear it out. Just simply say clear data. So it will wash off that field and that field will be blank in S4. Map if possible. So this is a kind of optional thing. System tries to map any field field. If no mapping exists, it goes to error. But the original data from the sending system is retained. So these are the four mapping actions. I'll show you on screen how it looks like. Uh, it can be done by each system. Like for one ECC system, you can have company code as keep data. For other ECC system, you can have company code as mapping obligatory. By default, just a quick note, by default, each object in SAP have a default mapping action when you start CFIN project is no mapping action assigned, it's blank. It's basically keep data. So this is an example. My object is customer, customer number. My business system here I'm talking about is ER9 client 500 and then mapping action, I, I say keep data. Similarly now if I add another ECC system, let's say ER8, client 500 and I can have like same for customer ID, I can have ER8 client 500 and I can say mapping obligatory. So any data coming from ER8 will have a mapping obligatory action but any data coming from ER9 will have keep data action. So it is, you can change it by business system. So you have a flexibility of doing that. Just an example. However, it is all the design decisions when you work with the client, when you implement uh, this uh, in work on CFIN projects, mapping is one of the key design area where you need to closely work with the finance team at the client side, the IT guys so to ensure that, you know, and it has to be the future, uh, consider the future vision as well, you know, how you are trying to, if you are acquiring more companies, how your mapping things will work out. Let's talk about the map types of mapping. We have key mapping, we have value mapping, and we have cost object mapping. So key mapping is like, all your mostly master data objects like customer, my vendor, GL accounts, uh, any master data things. Value mapping is like configurable things like company code, business area, document type, posting date, date key, etc. You a standard SAP has given a lot of uh, all, mostly all the standard objects in the mapping uh, arena. However, if you have any custom object, you can add that field as a new new mapping entity, and you can use it in in your business transactions. And then we have cost object mapping. We'll talk about that in detail in coming slides for cost object like internal order, production order, etc. It works very differently, not similar to key or value mapping. So we'll talk about that. So let's talk about CO mapping cardinality. So when we when I said CO mapping, it doesn't work the way other objects work. So you have a for uh, CO mapping, SAP has given the templates like for production order, internal order, maintenance order, QM order. Again, it's a design decision uh, that uh, when you implement, what is your strategy for CO reporting? You want to report the COI objects from S4 or you want to just keep on, you want to keep S4 for your financial reporting from various systems then you want to do your management reporting from ECC. Uh, so you have a cardinality options n is to one or one is to one or one is to n one is to one. Uh, for example, if you take a third example, internal order is one is to one, which means for each internal order in ECC, there would be an internal order in S4. So it's one is to one. When say when we say n is to one, you have thousands of internal order in ECC, but uh, they will be mapped to one internal order in S4. So it's like all the data for internal order, we just use a kind of dummy internal order in S4. So actually you do, you can't do a reporting of internal orders from S4 system. For that reporting, you have to rely on ECC. But from financial document perspective, there would be one internal order so that your accounting is successful when you post uh, on, on the cost element. So these are the mapping cardinality. Again, it's a design decision, how client goes about it, what, what, is the, what is their intent in long run. It is not just a temporary thing. It impacts your system for the long run. So SAP has given the, a simple upload functionality where you know you have a transaction fins underscore cfin underscore map underscore manage. You have an upload functionality for key and value mappings. Uh, you can, this is a mapping tool. Basically, you can use this mapping tool to manage the mappings for master data and customizing objects that are supported in central finance. However, you cannot use this mass upload, download, or display for cost objects. So as I said, there is a limitation. This tool only works for 
key and value mapping. The way to this tool works is this. So this works on the CSV format. So this is the, when you log into the transaction. This is how it looks like. You select the mapping entity. Let's say I say GL account. There is a drop down which shows all the objects. Then you select which source system we talk about. You can have multiple source systems. You have a source system selection option and then you have a user action. So number one is display. If you click on display and execute the transaction, it will display the GL account mapping for, the, for that particular source system with s hana Generate template. The moment you say generate template, the bottom option of file name gets activated. You, can, you have to give a file location where you want to save the template. Template is basically a CSV format in which you can put the data and you execute other options like upload mapping, download mapping, upload and delete mappings basically. So when you generate the template, you fill the data in the CSV file and you can simply select upload option, upload mappings, and you browse the, right, the file where you have fill in the data and you upload. And then it gives an option at the bottom, test run. If it is successful, it shows error, uh, the green window. All good. You just uncheck test run, similarly, you know, like all other SAP transactions, and upload it into SAP. If it is so give some error, you need to rectify that error first, and then you move ahead. And then we have download option. Download mappings is like it will download the file file in CSV format again uh, for the GL account, all GL account mapping done for the mentioned source system. So it will download everything. And the delete is, again, you have option of deleting mass. You have to give the data in the CSV file. Anything you up upload, you the put in the file and you browse it and you select the user action delete, it will delete it. So you have to be cautious that what you are deleting or what you are, you know, what you intend to delete. You have thousand lines, you want to delete five. So on CSV file, there should be only five options, five lines. It should not be 995. It should be the other way around. Anything you want to delete, select it, upload it. And on, ensure that you always check in the test mode first. If system says good to delete, delete it. If something error, error pops out, please remove that error and again retry that action. So it's a simple upload download functionality, works in a very standard CSV file format. Again, just a repetition, transaction is fins underscore cfin underscore map underscore manage, get activated when you activate your central finance. And one important thing to use to understand here is that there are two options for mapping. One is you use full-fledged MDG, where you want to have a licensing and you would complete your complete master data governance is driven by MDG. If you don't use MDG in your project, then you can use the MDG tables, which are part of CFIN package. You don't need any extra licensing for MDG then. You can just utilize the tables. However, if you want to use full-fledged MDG for your master data, for like customer, vendor, GL account, entire governance you want to draw, then in that case you need MDG licenses. So this is how you look like. You, I just click on the display option here. I said display mappings and for GL account, it displays all the mapping for the GL account being done with like company code, source company code, target company code, source chart of account, target chart of account, source GL account, target GL account. So that's how the view is. You have an option of download as well. So just a snapshot, we only focused in this session today on mappings. What is mapping? And then we talked about the key mapping, the value mapping through the upload function. You can also do that, you know, one by one through the, uh, when you get, jump into this navigation menu within SPRO or CFIN IMG. And then we have a cost object mapping you have. So any change to cost object like upload or create, create a cost object mapping, delete change, it has to be done from this menu itself. You have to go line by line and do that. You don't have any upload download functionality for your, you cannot use that mapping tool for uh, cost object mapping. Mapping actions we talked about, this is given here. Step number three under mappings, define mapping actions, key mapping, value mapping. These are the mapping actions. You can set it by a system. Types of mapping, this is CEO mapping. This transaction is very important, very interesting. Just a CSV upload download functionality for change, for delete, for 
generating template you can display it directly on the screen standard transaction so we'll come back with more videos uh, on subsequent topics in central finance uh, please ensure you subscribe the channel so that and you press the bell icon so that anytime the new video is uploaded you get the notification we'll keep on uploading the new videos on these subsequent topics within central finance like AIF tool integration from non SAP systems uh, AIF uh, there is a functionality of uh, debugging within AIF so we'll, we'll talk about that we'll talk about SLT configuration we'll talk about how to source system readiness and we'll talk about some FAQs and other things within you know once in in the coming few days so ensure that you subscribe this channel Nitin Gupta SAP you like and for any questions comments please feel free to write it uh, you know and I will ensure that uh, your will try to answer that question maybe in the new next session or so window Thank you so much for listening guys, hit like, share or subscribe and share the knowledge what you are getting and thank you so much.